This special meeting of the Judson Board of Trustees is hereby called to order at 5 p.m. I am very pleased that you have taken time to join us this evening. In compliance with state government code on open meetings, tonight's agenda has been appropriately posted. These proceedings are being video and audio recorded and will become part of Judson's permanent legal record. In order that the tape adequately reflects these proceedings, please silent your mobile devices and refrain from talking while others are speaking. Once again, I extend to each of you a sincere welcome from the entire school board. Thank you for your interest in Judson ISD. I have established a quorum and we will take attendance. I think. There we go. Oh. oh. Mine popped up for Rafa. Um. <laughs> Instead of me. His says Rafa Diaz on, yeah. on his. On yeah. And Mrs. King is not here, is she? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll take a verbal roll call then. Should I do that? Yes, or? please. Okay. Um, Ms. Knoyer? Present. Uh, Ms. Eaton? Present. Mr. Macias? Present. And I'm Jennifer Rodriguez, and I'm present. And to my left is Dr. Ball, our superintendent. Welcome. Okay, um, so absent are, uh, oh, it looks like mine was wrong too. Mine shown up on Miss King. Um, so uh, absent right now are Miss King, Miss Pichelle, and Mr. Diaz. Okay. Um, so do we have any citizens to be heard, uh, Betty? Okay. All right, so we'll move on to item uh, three, budget workshop. Yes. I'm going to Sunday, so we didn't make copies because we're trying to save the trees. Mm -hmm. if, if we could also put it on that screen. Awesome. Awesome. Mm, so I, this, I wouldn't uh, let the record show that Miss King has arrived because um, my name, when I checked in, it checked in Miss King. So <laughs> we will not use the devices for voting today. <laughs> want to make sure that everybody realizes how much I appreciate Scott because I couldn't have done this without him and then Bill that is watching from home because he is still sick um, but both of those are individuals are lifesavers to me so help me put all this together so I wanted to share some information this is a continuation of our budget workshops that we continue to have so wanted to give everybody a picture of local state federal um, budgets right there year to date so i wanted to share that information with everybody um, again we always talk about the a big portion of it for judson isd being on salaries then contracted services supplies miscellaneous share some information on the debt capital improvements and then the total so again just wanted to give everybody a glimpse this is a big picture overview the estimation could be approximately 3.2 million that we would be going into the fund balance from this current school year. You'll see um, in a minute some other figures, but wanted just to share right now that that, that could be like a worst case scenario. So again, um, wanted to share um, some additional information in regards to local, state, federal, you know, some salary um, information in regards to this is just specifically for child nutrition. So if you remember, we've always talked about this, this is nothing new. Child nutrition has their own budget. Um, so you will see right there, um, their net and their expenditures, the fundings that they get from local, state and federal, what they pay for salaries this truly is not anything new the board sees this on a monthly basis this is information that the board gets but wanted again just to start off with this information in regards to our debt services budget um, wanted to share this information what, what the budget the year to date um, where we're at right now so wanted to present that information want to go over the beginning the timeline we we started all of this and some very critical things 
will have to be happening again. Nothing really too new um, in regards to we shared with the board that this information would have to be put in the newspaper and how we would have to do that tomorrow. So wanted to share this timeline with the board in regards to us adopting the budget, when we would have to also adopt the tax rate, publish the notices. So just a timeline, again, just to remind the board uh, about our timeline for budget approvals. So some of the things that we want for people to keep in mind, average daily attendance, we're looking at approximately 22,000 um, students the estimated freeze taxable value of the 12 million, um, estimated tax collections, we're always looking at about 98%, um, the MNO tax rate, the INS tax rate. Um, if, again, want to thank the board for the what you have done for our staff, um, our, we have the 4% midpoint raise for professionals. I always include this because every time that we say a budget workshop, the board, I mean, individuals think like, why are they changing it? What's going on? So always want to put that on there. That is not changing. The board is very committed is what I tell all our staff members and thank our staff member, th the staff members, thank you guys because we've received lots of kudos for that. So again, just putting that out there, the 4% and the 6%, that is not changed and we're not talking about changing any of that information. So looking at our general fund budget um, for adoption. So I'd like to take a few minutes for everybody to look at this. Again, everybody has a copy. Um, this is what was given out on Sunday. So this is local revenue, state revenue, federal revenue, and then the totals. So you have that information that you can compare from last year to this year. So I want to just give everybody a few minutes to look at that. Then, of course, look at the expenditures, look at the total revenue, and then look at the total revenue and the total expenditures. So you will notice there on the right-hand side our fund balance of $106 million. Okay. Then you will notice the approximate 23.9, pretty close to $24 million that we would go in to our fund balance still leaving us a very healthy, in my opinion, a healthy fund balance of 81 million. And the board has shared with me that, you know, we could always look at things that we will need for safety, security, other, other things, um, and we will be bringing that information later on. But this is where it currently would be standing right now. I just want to check my own understanding here. So um, on the 21-22 budget, there's the, like, that revenue versus expenditure line says $1 million. So, like, we had planned to go into our fund balance by $1 million this year, but actually we're looking like we're going to put, is that what that's saying or no? So we had actually thought it was going to be more. Okay. Okay. Now we really looking at it, it'll be most likely less because there were so many positions we did not fill. So this is the good news that most likely we won't have to be going in through like the previous slide. Let me go yeah. back. Sorry, sorry. Let me go back. I think I'm just trying to reconcile this with the 3.2 million that you yes. put on the first slide. And right. so this, oh, God. let me go one more. One more. Sorry. I'm coming. So right there, that 3.2 is what we originally thought it was going to be. But then as the year progressed and we didn't fill some of those positions, then now we think it's going to be much better than that 3.2. And all of this, of course, is as of April. We still have a little bit more to go, but as of April, it's now we could say that it's looking more like the 1 million. Thank you. Yeah, great question, great question. Scott, if, if you wanna add something, by all means, it never hurts my feelings. Dr. Ball. Yes, sir. The um, 23.9 million. I recall our compensation plan that we adopted was at 22. So just like Mr. Rodriguez, I'm trying to understand the difference. I think it was 22.7 or 22.1 or something like that that we would dig in. So the additional is this year's. Right. The additional is 
the part that we added for curriculum and instruction. If you remember when I brought that plan, it was, oh gosh, pretty close to 500,000, I believe. 650? Okay, 650 that we added um, because of those adjustments that we made for the curriculum department. So, th so it, this 23.9 then would include the million plus the 650,000? More or less, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking from adding from the 22 million, just to simplify things. Right. Okay. Oh, so the audit is in here too, which yes. that's helpful to know. Yes, yes. absolutely. Um, and we still obviously need to come back to that too, but at least I know it's in this discussion. We projected that that would be an expense. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And just like the board said, we might use it all, we might not, like at any of these categories. Then here's um, the, the budget for child nutrition. Again, looking at the estimated for this year, then uh, the budget for next year and some changes um, in that area. Debt service. So a couple of things that we would like for the board to keep, um, keep in mind, keep in consideration or have some discussion with us. The homestead exemption increases to 40,000 up from 25,000. Then we know that this is going to be a legislative year, um, so they, they will convene. We're hopeful that that could bring about some positive changes. Then we also know that we will have to have a conversation in regards to safety you know, what will come from our budget, if there will be anything from legislator, legislators that provide some funding for that, looking at that. Um, school funding will also be a very hot topic this session. I think it always is. Um, looking at our buildings that are aging with that infrastructure and having a focus in regards to safety and what our plan is to come back and to bring the board a big picture of what it would cost. Um, safety wise so then the board could lead us in a direction of saying as it was mentioned maybe going for a bond in November just for safety taking it all from our fund balance or having a three-year progression and saying this is what we could do this year this is what we could do next year and so forth the following um, again concentrating on safety support for extracurricular activities and the reason we put that on there is because a lot of the research is showing we have to keep kids engaged. Keeping kids engaged, interested in school also helps the mental, social, emotional needs of our students, getting them back to acclimated in school, making sure that they're positively engaged, feeling wanted, feeling that they're needed um, so we can have more, product, more production and productivity from our students with higher attendance, with lower retention rates. So that's something that we're looking at. And then, of course, continuously working on the community involvement and the building of the trust that we want to do. So these are some of the things that we're keeping in mind as we do our planning for future years and wanted the board to continue to keep these things also in mind. Dr. So, Wall, so, uh -huh. if I could interrupt yes, you sir. there. Uh, we're at the questions, comments slide anyway, so yes. maybe this mm -hmm. is the right time to ask. There was a program that was um, not supported by a majority of my colleagues some years ago that was a pilot program that Metzger Middle School had launched. It was a peer-to-peer -peer program trying to dismantle why students didn't understand their fellow students. Okay. And um, it's a program I advocated for back then. Uh, but the idea, again, was to reach students at a level that if there's bullying within our middle school ranks, which we know occurs, that this program would help students understand themselves. The problem was that it was held um, during the day, which took away from curriculum. I mean, the focus, I think, back then, the argument was we needed to have them in the classroom, mm -hmm. which I can understand that. but. Bringing a program like that was innovative and it did work to alleviate bullying at the time at Metzger. Would, in your opinion, looking at something structured like that, 
uh, where would we put something? Is it a different day now? Uh, just give me your thoughts on something like that, because I would look at that. Sure. So one of the things that I'm also looking at, and I have a meeting with the Boys and Girls Club, is having activities for our middle schools. Right now, we have Adventure Club. Uh, for all our elementary campuses. So that could be something that we increase as part of our after school activities. Also, it could be built into the rotation. So what I have asked the counselor's uh, department to do is to build rotations into a child's schedule so that they're not missing instruction. So they're, they're, it's part of their, whether sometimes one day they might go to PE Another time they might go to um, the counseling, they might go to athletics, they, they might go to ROTC, whatever the case may be, but the time is actually built into there. Similar to kind of the way study hall used to be done a long time ago. Do you remember the name of the program so I could look, in, look it up? I do, I do. Ms. Bashala was on the board at the same time okay. too, and uh, she'll remember it too as a program at Metzger. I can't remember the name of it, but okay. I certainly have information about that program. I attended one of the sessions just mm -hmm. to kind of get a look at that. Do you remember it, Sessie? Oh, yes. We so, do use restorative practices. Well, this yes. program, I, I think it may have utilized Oh, okay. Utilize that, but it was different. It was a, it was a partnership that we had. Okay. And uh, again, I'll get you the specifics. I think the leadership on that nonprofit has changed, but the premise is that any anyone could probably do that. Mm -hmm. But it did alleviate issues. And as I was in some of those cl cl classes or, or those peer groups, it was really interesting to see them accepting and understanding. Where again, just with the attempt to to alleviate bullying issues. I remember, um, and, and not to put words in Ms. Pashal's mouth, but she can echo this, her concern back then was the equity, because it was only at Metzger. And so naturally, if communities we... Communities and schools. It, it, w it wasn't a communities and schools program. But it, um, we needed to be broader in our approach, uh, because I think it was really working well for Metzger. And uh, I remember, I think I tried to get $10,000 to the program at the time. but. We won't go too deeply into it right now. I just wanted to kind of put that out there as something else that I'd like you to look into because I think that's innovative enough, but it's, it gets to the root of where the issues might be in middle school for our students. Right. We will definitely look at it. Right now, we are partners with the UP Partnership, and it's through my brother's keeper. And several campuses are have gone through the training at least two years. It might be longer, but they've gone through the training and using that. So I will can bring back some more information and explore the possibility of using that a little bit more. Because through, the bro through our Brothers Keeper and the UP Partnership, we do have that resource. Then, of course, we do have Communities and Schools, which is an excellent resource for our district. And we'll look at the possibility if we need to expand that also because that's another avenue. I think the program was called United Communities. United Communities? But again, it's dysfun dysfunctional now. It's not operational now, but the sure. idea back then just had a lot of value. So yeah, just putting it out there as part of the outreach that we do to help our middle school kids. But, and, and when we're talking, when we come back at another meeting and talk about the safety, it's two components that we're going to be bringing back to the board. What we need in regards to safety and security, but also the component that's very important is to the being proactive so it doesn't get to those types of crises, making sure that we're meeting all our kids' needs. Um, so those two components will go hand in hand. So we'll make sure we bring it up at that time. Oh, sorry. So what I was going to say was um, in the next few days, what we will be sending everybody to look at is the budgets for campuses and departments. You'll be able to see um, what their amount was for this year and what it is planned for next year. So um, hopefully by Monday, if everybody's healthy and feeling good, we'll, we'll be able to send that to y'all on Monday and then you'll have that with plenty of time to look at it for the June 22nd meeting. I noticed on, if, to that point, I mm -hmm. think I noticed on one of the slides um, where there was a difference in personnel spending, but there was also a, uh, an increase in like just departmental budgets. Yes. Um, so at a high level, you don't have to go into great detail, but like, is that just based on enrollment that, you know, now I, we have 
more students, so then we're increasing budgets, or were there other significant changes there? It's a couple of things. So enrollment is certainly one of them. Looking at the campus, the departments and campuses doing a needs assessment and seeing what is needed. So it's multiple factors. The uh, child nutrition budget, if you can go back yes, to that, please. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, is that child nutrition? Yes. Do you want me to? This is the 20 yeah. The, oh, oh, sorry. Give me one second. Let me. Oops. There we go. That, that's the one I was looking at. So, yes, all still the child nutrition. I noticed that we have a revenue um, expense surplus. Am I, am I reading that correctly? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. And so to, to get back to the, uh, I won't say crisis, but it seemed like a crisis where we had um, child nutrition here talking about the quality of food that mm -hmm. we were serving or not serving or whatever that situation was and, and ask you guys to look into it a little bit deeper and to create a committee and all that kind of stuff. I would like to see if we're not able to utilize some of those extra funds to, you know, do more to, um, I know part of it's the partnership we've discovered that some of our partners just weren't providing the quality food that we needed. But if, if there could be um, some other things inserted with that, uh, I think that would be advantageous. And certainly we have room to maneuver in that area with that. Absolutely. And that's one of the conversations that I know that are being had with Ms. Concha because coming out of the, the pandemic, a lot of the things were prepackaged for safety. They were prepackaged. And now we're going to try to go back to, I think if you all would remember when we were in school, we always had Enchilada Wednesday. Uh, so going back to us doing some of our own cooking instead of the prepackaged things. And I think our students would like that. So we will be looking at those types of things. I know that the board wants better quality meals instead of saving money. Um, we'd rather feed more kids and have a better quality. So we will definitely look at that. I mean, it gives the door, the opportunities there. We're not at a deficit budget in child nutrition, so there's extra money for us to do that. And then the last question regarding that, our operational cost, can you tell me why it went down from 21-22 and it's, it's less than 22-23? Um, Scott, help me out to remember on that part. Yeah, they went down 1.168 million. Yeah, almost a million dollars. And is the operating cost tied to personnel or is it actual food? Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's all questions? I have. We'll provide uh, additional information, hopefully by Monday. Um, we'll send out some more information and then be prepared to answer more questions on the 22nd. Yes, sir. The last question I have is regarding the budget that we'll receive on Monday, the departmental yes, budgets. Mm -hmm. Is there an expectation that we're going to have to dig into fund balance for that as well? This already takes everything into consideration. Okay, so this... this mm -hmm. Unless the board were to tell me something different and say, oh, give so-and-so this department more money or something, this is already taken that into consideration. I imagine the only thing that's not in there uh, would be the... Um, Increased personnel in, in safety? Correct, sir. It Anything related to safety right now is not in there, no. Okay. Absolutely correct. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Diaz, you had a question. Does the adopted budget take into account uh, departmental budget for the Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer? Yes. Okay. Um, so on Monday, we'll see what that number is? Um, for the department. I'm assuming yes. we fund initiatives or you'll see uh, what that department would be allotted to get okay. the work done okay mm -hmm. no further question okay I think that's all the questions and comments we have on that item 
Um, so the next thing on our agenda is um, number four for personnel. Um, we'll take that into closed session, which is the next thing on the agenda. So let me read my closed session script. All right. The board will now adjourn into closed session pursuant to the following sections of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.074, discussing personnel, the personnel report, and updates including new hires, resignations, and administrative appointments. The time is now 525, and we will adjourn into closed session. Thank you, all senior staff. You don't have to wait.
Oh, is he ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. The board will now reconvene in open session. The time is 542. No final action, decision, or vote was taken while the board was in closed session. Um, and so uh, we will move on to number six, consider and take possible action regarding items discussed in closed session. We'll vote on the personnel report. Um, I'm going to do a roll call vote because our devices are not matched up to our names correctly. So I'll start with Ms. Pichelle. We Ms. need Pichelle, a motion. Uh, do, do, do we need to make a motion? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I yeah. need a motion. I'm I so move sorry. that we accept the personnel report as closed. I mean, as Second. discussed in closed session. Thank you. That was moved and seconded. Thank you for reminding me of the procedures. Ms. Pichelle, now you can vote. Ms. Pichelle, aye. Mr. Macias? Yes. Mr. Diaz? Rafael Diaz, aye. Ms. Knoyer? Suzanne. Suzanne Knoyer, aye. Ms. King? Shatanya King, aye. Ms. Eaton? Deborah Eaton, aye. And I, Jennifer Rodriguez, vote aye. And that motion passes 7 0. And I'll also note that um, our board members that were absent at the beginning of the meeting were able to join us during the course of the meeting. So we have full attendance now. Um, and there being no further business in this meeting, is adjourned at 543.